for sure. I made it 10 times, 10 times sweeter. You know what I'm saying? Instead of winning one belt, I got to win three. You know what I'm saying? So, this is a great evening. What's up, what's up, what's up, what's up, what's up, you guys? The hey. legends, the legends. That's uh, Lennox Lewis. Yeah, Jay house, what did you think about this man's performance this against a, Jared Hurd? Listen, not even the performance, just how the man is. The man's humble, the man works hard. He's a credit man, a credit to the sport and himself. We need more guys like this. Believe that. When you come in the arena and you see me play, you see me play, don't you? You see me give everything I got, right? But we talking about practice right now. What's going on, guys? It's your boy, KCJ, and I'm back with another banger for you guys. All my loyal fans, please hit that like button because it helps the channel grow. And for those of you who are new, hit the subscribe button right below the video to be notified when there's another upload. With that being said, let's jump into the video. Who is Julian J. Rock Williams? Julian Williams was born April 5th, 1990 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He was raised in the west part of Philly and is a Muslim. He has two brothers and one sister on his mom's side and two sisters on his father's side. Boxing was Williams' outlet during a difficult childhood. He was homeless at the age of 13 and his mom battled a drug addiction and his father was in jail. Williams was in and out of shelters including one on the first floor of what was the Roosevelt Boulevard Motel called the Kirkbride Shelter. He got back and forth from school across the city, sometimes falling asleep on the Frankfurt L. Julian Williams was going to Shoemaker Middle School and later Overbrook High. His very first coach, Kenny Mason, basically adopted him. Julian lived with him until he was 19 years old. Mason taught him how to be a good person and a man. From 1991 to 2001, his dad was locked up a year after he was born. J-Rock didn't know anything about his dad or what he looked like. He met his dad when he was 10 years old and as of today, he's one of his best friends. This is what Julian Williams had to say about growing up. I was living in a shelter but going to school every day. Nobody really knew about it. You just pushed through those tough times. I got a permit and started working when I was 14. It was rough. I knew shit wasn't normal but it wasn't going to be that way forever. I had to get up really early. I had to catch the R bus to L in Frankfurt. I get off at 56th street and catch the G bus. It was tough. It took an hour and a half each way. The mornings weren't so bad, but coming back at night, I'd be tired and I'll fall asleep a couple of times on the L. Sometimes you'll wake up and you'll be going back toward where you started. Being homeless was my normal. It wasn't great, but I know a lot of people who have gone through worse. Williams said the shelter experience toughened him. He said he never once cried. Around that time, he got a job at a boxing gym and soon took up the sport. By the time he was 20, he was fighting as a top level amateur. It was when his mom died of congestive heart failure from the effects of her cocaine use, which he calls the hardest moments of his life in 2013, a month prior to Julian's September fight with Hugo Centeno Jr. During training for Centeno, Williams made weekend visits to Philadelphia to a sick mother in North Carolina. This was the moment Williams' life was at rock bottom. I was planning my mom's funeral during training. She was living with my sister. My brothers and I would ride down knowing she was sick, but not to the point where she would die. Williams said after she passed, it was heart wrenching. Trying to focus on boxing was extremely difficult. I started getting calls from Al Heyman asking if I wanted to pull out. And I said, no, I want to fight. Just a side note, Al Heyman was his advisor at the time, not manager. He signed with Al Heyman when he was nine and oh. He was in a terrible contract with Gary Shaw. He wasn't making any money and he was only fighting once or twice a year. Julian Williams also said that Al Heyman has kept every promise he's made to him. Back to the subject of his mother. Williams was mad at the time finding out his mom was addicted to drugs because he really didn't understand it as a kid. Despite her being addicted to drugs, he said she was a really good parent. He thinks life got the best of her by being a single parent, working multiple jobs, trying to take care of the family. He remembers when his mom bought her first house. It was condemned, but it was her house. In the summer, the AC would go out, and in the winter, sometimes the heat didn't work. There were nights when it was 15 degrees in the house. Julian said, you don't know how poor you are until you're not poor anymore. 
Everybody around him was the same. He didn't find out he was poor until he started traveling as a boxer. That's when he saw the rich kids and said, I want to be like that. J-Rock spent a lot of time outside. Being where he is from, the neighborhoods are rough, so he would get into fights. One day, someone took him to the gym. William said in an interview, I used to street fight a lot. I wasn't like the kids today who stay in the house and play video games. I was always outside getting into stuff. When you grow up in the place I grew up at, in the inner city, outside a bunch, you're going to get into fights. There's a lot of bullies, a lot of kids in the neighborhoods, and one day, someone took me to the boxing gym. Julian Williams started boxing at age 12. He had an amateur record of 77 and 10. He reached number 5 in the rankings at national level, although never won a national tournament. Williams' trainer was Stephen Edwards. Edwards met a 17-year-old Williams in his Philadelphia home through his amateur trainer in December 2007 while hosting a fight party for Floyd Mayweather's knockout victory over Ricky Hatton. Edwards is a relative to Williams' amateur coach, Kenny Mason, who became his trainer in 2009 and professional coach a year later. This is what Edwards had to say about Julian Williams. My initial impressions were of a determined, go-driven kid. As coach, you become a surrogate father and mentor, advising him beyond his abilities as a good fighter. Years later, Julian is a good father, doing well financially, purchased properties, has a stock folio, he's preparing for a life after boxing. Julian Williams made his professional debut in May 2010, beating Antonio Fernandez by a technical knockout in the first round. In April 2013, Williams became the second fighter to stop Deshaun Johnson, improving his record to 12-0-1 with the third round TKO. In his next fight, Williams won a unanimous decision over former world champion Joaquim Alcine. Alcine was dropped three times, but he rallied and won the final three rounds. Williams would survive and take the win though. Williams' next fight was against Hugo Centeno Jr., but the fight ended in a no contest after an accidental headbutt. Williams led Centeno 30-27 on all three cards when a fourth round clash of heads caused cuts over the left eye of both fighters, forcing a no contest. This is what J-Rock had to say about the Centeno fight. Centeno would have been the biggest win of my career at the time. I was extremely pissed off that it didn't happen. I thought the referee made a bad call. It was aggravating after training so hard. But you're not going to always get the outcome you want. You fall off your bicycle, dust yourself off and get back on. Kids don't have to be athletes to be considered a success. If my story inspires them to get off their ass and get a high school diploma, that's an achievement. What's more important, my mother or a boxing match? If I can get through that, I can get through anything. On December 10th, 2016, Williams challenged IBF champion Jamal Charlo. Charlo dropped Williams in the second round with a powerful jab. Williams came back and fought a clever fight, making Charlo miss, slipping punches, and landing some good counters. In round five, Charlo landed a right uppercut, dropped Williams again. Williams got up, however, Charlo went for the finish and got it with a third knockdown after a barrage of punches, ending with a left hook. After the referee stopped the fight, Williams went over to congratulate Charlo. Charlo didn't want to embrace and told Williams, I don't want your congratulations. I want your apology. The crowd started to boo Charlo. In a post-fight interview, Charlo stated that Williams had disrespected him leading up to the fight. Now, this is what Julian Williams said after the Charlo loss. Life goes on, and so does my career. Taking a loss doesn't mean you can't be world champion and a good fighter. And it's certainly not bigger than the loss of my mother. And he was right, because on May 11th of 2019, Williams defeated Gerald Hurd by unanimous decision for the Unified Light Middleweight Championship. Now let's talk about his lifestyle a little bit. Julian Williams still has a strong bond with his father, saying, I've always had a tight relationship with my father. There were some tough moments he went through that affected me as well. But when he came home, he got on his feet and we didn't dwell on it. We moved on. He also hopes to fight into his mid-30s and move up a weight class or two as long as he stay healthy and free from any early signs of brain damage. If that should ever occur, he won't hesitate to walk away. Now, on the matter, Williams said, it's definitely a tough sport, but I don't really take too much punishment. I know a lot of fighters who had long amateur and pro careers and are fine. I think it depends on who you are, how you take care of yourself outside of the ring. But I have a family to take care of, so my health does come first. He also said, I haven't had any serious injuries. Last June, I had surgery, arthroscopic, to take care of some buildup in my elbow. 
that's about it. Julian Williams is the father of two daughters, a nine month old and a four year old. This is what he had to say about his oldest daughter. I definitely see a lot of my mother in Zora. She looks so much like my mom, it's scary. That's sweet, but check this out. J-Rock just found out two years ago, his little brother was adopted by another family before being adopted by the family he's with now. He also said that his little brother had a tougher childhood than him growing up. His brother is one of the main people who encourages him to tell his life story so kids in similar situations know they are not alone. Williams lives in Blackwood and does most of his training in Philadelphia. When not preparing for a fight, he does early morning road work at Temple a few times a week. In the afternoon, he heads to the gym where he'll sometimes box six or seven rounds to stay in shape. This is what he said about that. I don't want to get too far out of shape with my weight. Training is hard and you don't want to have to use it to make weight. So I have to maintain weight between fights, which is really hard. At 5'11", I'm not the smallest 154 pounder in the world. And as you get older, it gets harder to get the weight off. That's part of being a professional. It's not the worst thing in the world, but sometimes fights aren't real simple. So I just try to keep to my fundamentals as far as boxing is concerned. And I found that philosophy works pretty well in life too now i told you he's a muslim but when he's traveling muslims don't have to fast for ramadan but he has to make those days up he didn't grow up a muslim he took his shahada when he was 18 years old his father is a muslim and he has other family members who are also muslim he has never used any drugs or has been drunk from alcohol he's not a flashy person for example expensive jewelry he doesn't need it and he can live without it. He spends his money on real estate. Every time he has a fight, he uses the payout to purchase houses and from there, he fixes them up and rents them out. He doesn't buy anything over $10,000 unless it makes him money. This is his way of creating financial stability for his family. Thank you for making it to the end of this video. Please give it a like because it helps the channel grow. And for those of you who are new, subscribe. See you in the next one. Go! I don't like fighters who talk too much. I'm the world's greatest. He must fall in five rounds, but if you talk about me, I'll cut it three. What's gonna happen to him? He might be great, but he'll fall in eight. I'm the prettiest fighter in the ring today. That's my label. I'm gonna prove that I am still the real champion, and I want them all to tune in.